I'm Robert Platchorn. I'm the man who spent more time in federal prison for marijuana than anyone in the history of the United States. I did 30 years in federal prison for a nonviolent marijuana offense. I used to be a smuggler. Uh, I tell my story in my book, Black Tuna Diaries, which has gotten great reviews. And you can learn about me in the movie Square Grouper, which is now on Showtime or available on Netflix, iTunes, or video on demand. Uh, the reason I'm here is to promote the Silver Tour. After being on the road with the book in the movie for over a year, I realized that we were all preaching to the choir. No one was actually going out and trying to reach the public with information about medical marijuana, the safety of marijuana, the efficacy of marijuana. All the groups like Normal, ASA, they preach to the choir. When I go to Hemp Fest, Hemp Stalk, and of course I go to all the High Times Cannabis Cup events, I write for High Times, I do a senior medical column for High Times. Uh, you're still preaching to the choir. And I felt I had to do something to reach out to the public, especially because the senior vote is so important and has been so ignored. I watched Prop 19 in California, and there was a tremendous amount of money spent on publicity to overcome the negativity of the growers and the dispensaries who didn't want to see legalization because they thought it would affect their income. And it occurred to me, that most of those people don't vote. They can't vote. Most have felony convictions. The growers and, and the people around the growers are all ghosts. They don't want to vote. But the only people who went to the polls, and that was a by-election, 90% uh, of the attendees at the polls were seniors and, and Hispanics. No one was talking to seniors except the beer lobby. And all they had to say was, you don't want stoners on the road. And seniors are easy to scare. But they were the people who defeated Prop 19. And I mean, that's my generation. We invented marijuana on the mass scale it's known today. Before that, not many people were smokers, jazz musicians, ethnic groups, but there was no widespread availability or demand for good cannabis. My generation made it happen and we never bought the government's story. We never bought the negativity that the government had been spreading for years. You know, in the beginning they said it makes white women chase black men and uh, Henry Anslinger said it makes Negroes think they're as good as white people. And of course it's the cause of all the greatest evil in America. It's the cause of jazz, and jazz is an evil music. I mean, th that's how they sold prohibition. The real reason, of course, was to stop the hemp industry. But no one was talking to them about marijuana today and its medical uses. No one needs it more than a senior. And no voting group is as important as seniors. Seniors can make or break an election in almost every state, certainly in California, Arizona, Florida, any place where there's large retirement communities. Without the senior vote, nobody gets into office. So I started something called the Silver Tour. And I go around and put on a show. It's not a lecture. It's not a seminar. It's not a panel or any of those other things that tend to put you to sleep. It's a show. I'm an old pitchman. I worked on the boardwalk with Billy Mays and Ron Popeil. If you've ever read my book, Black Tuna Diaries, there's an inscription by Billy Mays that says Bobby Platchorn was a legend in the pitch business, one of the greatest. Well, if I can pitch Vitamixes and Ginzu Knives, <coughs> and I was the first guy on TV with Ginzu Knives, uh, I can certainly pitch cannabis. So I go around and we have a doctor who tells them about the medical uses, the safety, assures them it doesn't interfere with their medications, which is one of the great fears. 
and we explain that you don't have to smoke it. That's the other great fear. A lot of seniors don't want to smoke, but they have no conception of edibles, oils, tinctures, uh, extracts, ice cream, all the ways they can do cannabis. They don't know about uh, vaporizers. So now we've given them a variety of ways to get it. And then there's usually a lawyer who will get up and explain the legal situation in that state or how to change the legal situation. And at many of our shows, we have a congressman who actually speaks to the audience, tells them they're entitled to get cannabis. There's no reason they shouldn't. And he tells them how Congress works and what to do specifically to change the laws. So it's a great show. We don't encourage activists to come to the show. This show is for the uninitiated. We go into senior communities, clubhouse. I'm not talking about nursing homes. I'm talking about places where people still play golf, go swimming, play tennis, have an active life. And they've got the time and the inclination to go after their legislators and get them to change things. And we go into the clubhouse, we give them a big free buffet that fills the seats. Seniors love free food. And uh, well, if you've seen the piece that CNN did, you know, they interviewed the people coming in, all of whom said, well, I'm here out of curiosity. My nephew sent me, my grandson sent me, my neighbor was coming, so I rode with her. And then the interviews at the end were unanimously in favor. I want to try it. Maybe I can get off with some medications. I think I'm old enough to make up my own mind. And those, the press coverage has been national. CNN, Newsweek, next week the Wall Street Journal. They did a fabulous piece and they even did live interviews which will be on their website. Next week I have a show. Because of the national publicity here, I got a call from the biggest channel in Australia that covers the whole country, TV7. They've already flown in a crew who are going to video my show next week uh, with Irv Rosenfeld. It looks like Bob Melamede's going to be my medical expert and uh, the congressman's going to be there. And we're actually attracting attention all over the world. And because this will be on prime time in Australia, it will echo right back to the States. And so we'll get even more national publicity. And to the best of my knowledge, there is no one else who is reaching out, educating the public, and turning them in our favor, as opposed to organizations like Normal, which I love. I'm a director of Normal. But Normal waits for people to come to them. And so you will never get change on a mass scale. We made so much progress, and we are so close to being able to push it over the edge or get pushed back. Now it's got to be one or the other. In California, when Prop 19 didn't pass, I knew sure as could be that the DEA, FBI would take that as a mandate from the public to go ahead and start closing down dispensaries, go after growers. And now this year, Colorado, Oregon, Washington, one of them has to pass full legalization. Otherwise, we are going to get kicked back down the hill. It has to happen. There's no alternative. And so something has to push it. And the silver tour is the answer because seniors vote. I've already been contacted by the organizations in Oregon for both the legalization initiatives, and I will actually back both of them. They don't conflict in any way. Uh, I've been contacted by the two big dispensary associations in Colorado. They know, and they said to me, Bobby, we need the senior vote, and you're about the only guy who knows how to go out and get it. Hopefully they'll have the funds and we're going to put the Silver Tour on television in a half hour format. I'm an old infomercial guy. I was doing them before they were even called infomercials. 
I know how to buy that time in bulk at auction so that I could cover the whole state of Colorado and run a show a hundred times on good networks and good stations for under twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars and that's mighty cheap in, t in campaign terms. You reach a lot of people and running that a hundred times will attract a lot of attention and the repetition will do what, what we need it to do because physically you can't bring the Silver Tour everywhere. It's too expensive and I'm almost 70 years old. I got to get off the road. <laughs> TV is what I know. I worked in television since I was 19. I was a TV writer. I was a news broadcaster. I was a director. I was a promotion director. I know television inside and out. And I can sell this concept if we can get the sponsorship. You've given a lot for this, uh, this movement too, haven't you? Uh, you yeah. Sacrificed a great deal. I mean, 30 years. And since I've come out of prison, except for the first year, where I went back to the pitch business and I was selling uh, frying pans in, in Sam's Clubs in order to get eating money to, to finish my book and then do the movie. And the movie's a documentary. Nobody gets paid for a documentary. It's on Showtime now, but I don't get anything out of it. I actually live on uh, less than $700 Social Security. And my book. The book really pays for the groceries. The book's done very well. It's, it's not a smuggling book or a prison book per se. It's a memoir. It encompasses my years in Europe. I started the first speed reading schools in Europe. I had schools in England, Holland, Germany. I used to ride around London in a mini cab with Baron Rothschild. And uh, I was a bullfighter in Spain. And, all the stories of the old pitch business when I was on the road with Ron Popeil and people like Billy Mays, those stories are in the book. So it's, it's not a smuggling book or an exploitation book. Uh, it's got a lot of great stories and, and people love it. The name of that book is? Black Tuna Diaries. The best place to get it is either blacktunadiaries.com or go to thesilvertour.org. You'll get all the Silver Tour information. You'll see all the videos that have been done by the TV stations. And you'll go to the Stash House and you can buy the book or the DVD. All of them signed and autographed. Uh, I actually ship them out from my house. All the orders come into the house and in the morning I, I do the signings and mail them out. You can get it from Amazon, but I get more money when you buy it from me. I like that. Are you enjoying the 2012 Patients Out of Time conference? There's nothing like it on earth. It's very important and it brings together all the authorities in our movement. Uh, I didn't go to the last one. I couldn't afford to. I don't know that I could afford to go to this one, but I knew the Silver Tour had to be represented. I knew there'd be information here that would be very important and people that I've known for a long time but never met. People like Bob Melamy and uh, Dr. Bierman. And well, we need to get the science out to the seniors, don't we? Yeah, and it has to be done in layman's terms, and that's what I do. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sitting with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me.